Thank Hi. you. <laughs> so, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Fred Tremblay, and I am the art director of the team. I have been in the advertising for 18 years and uh, at LG2, where we work uh, since eight years. Hi, I'm uh, Jen. I'm the copywriter of the duo. I've been working in advertising for 16 years and 13 at LG2. So me and Fred, we worked together as a team for many years before becoming co-creative directors. Now we are both creative directors on our own, but we still work as a team because we like the process, the product that we create. And frankly, we just have too much fun to let it go. Now about LG2. LG2 is the largest independent creative agency in Canada. We have a complete 360 offer uh, with design, advertising, production, architecture, web, content, and all that in three offices situated in Montreal, Quebec City, and Toronto. We work with clients like Under Armour, Lobla, LCBO, CCM, Agropur, Hydro-Québec, New Look Eyewears, and Farnam. And we have a demo to show you what kind of work we do at LG2. Donc, j'espère que vous avez été attentifs à votre dernière classe de français. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, me and Fred, we both know that we, um, that we have big accent. So if at any moment you need us to repeat, don't be shy to tell us, please. And with all that, let's dive into our subject. With all the change happening in the advertising industry, one thing really stay the same, and that's the creative team. Today, we're going to talk about what makes a great duo, how you can nurture this relationship, and how can you personally benefit from it. We thought it would be interesting to expose to you in six points what we think is important to form a good team and not wasting years living with a bad choice. With that comes the first point, which is do not rush into a team. When you will get the opportunity to be on a team, uh, it could be tempting to jump quickly into this new partnership. Our advice would be to resist the urge and take your time. Because there, there is more to it than just team up a copywriter and an art director. Chemistry is one of the most important things. And to know if there is a need, you will have to test the water a bit. Our suggestion would be to uh, have a lunch or take a beer or two maybe with the future part, your future partner, uh, have a first brainstorm. You should get the answer quickly and know if this is a good fit to play advertising rapidly. There should be a, there should be a flow like a ping pong game. If it's not there uh, on the second and third date, there are good chances it will never happen. 
The, uh, our second advice will be to please do not judge a book by its cover. If we did, we would have never ended up together, me and Jen. We work uh, in the same office, in the, the same building, uh, in the same floor for three years, and never even exchange a word to uh, never never even exchange a word to each other before we were put together on the same brief. Uh, and personally, after one project, I knew that there was something special with Jen, uh, that there was something really good happening to me. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> now <laughs> with the second point, um, it's uh, that you are looking for a partner and not a friend. Even if I'm, uh, even if I'm friend with Fred uh, now, obviously, uh, th this is not what you are. You should be looking in a, in that professional relationship. It's a relation that you have with someone, so you need to have some sort of connection and share some point of view. But you are not looking for someone to have Saturday night dinner with or share the same passion for a miniature train, for example. Ideally, your partner has strength where you have weaknesses and vice versa. This will make you a stronger team, but it can also allow you to become a better creative. In a good partnership, that growth is something that just happened organically. For example, when I started to work with Fred, I was questioning myself way too much before I speak, often ending with me not sharing my ideas. And by observing Fred, I realized that I should trust my instinct more and that I would not die if I said something wrong or just too quickly. And from my side, uh, watching Jen make me learn to shut up a little bit and uh, listen more often. Uh, she also made me see the smart and strategic side of the advertising. As, as Jen said, uh, I was going by instinct uh, and I think I have been lucky to not hit a wall in the past. Uh, which brings us to our third point, which is the process. When you are working a brief as a team, there are, there are a lot of defining steps in the project. Uh, since you'll be working as a team, you need to find what's successful for your duo. And what we're gonna share today is not a receipt for success since it can evolve depending on the client or the partner that you are working with. But there are some, still some basics, uh, we think. And so the first one would be the brainstorm. On our part, we suggest to never start dry. When uh, me and Fred get brief, we do some digging and thinking on our side before we jump into the ring, the ring together. That way we have some material to share and uh, play with on our first session. It gives you something to, it just gives you something to start with. After that, there's the art of presentation. There, there is usually a talker and a listener. One that's more exposed, that's the one who share and present the idea. But the other one also has an important role. Is the one, that, that person's the one who's gonna make the client feel listened to. That's also the one that we have the opportunity to come back at the, this one perfect timing with a really strong argument. And um, these tactics also allow you to play bon cup, bad cup, for example. Because you are a team, you need to understand your public and play along with it. Some clients need the clown to present, some uh, other one need to be the strategic one. And maybe some clients just need to feel they're part of a gang, so you, you'll have to play the group of friend, the group, the group of friend card. And, because it's a business of perception, you really have to read uh, the client. And if you don't know her or he, uh, you have to really ask questions to account people about it. So you know what you are getting into, but it's really important to be prepared. The, this, all, every presentation needs a preparation beforehand. And or toward uh, place where you have to really uh, work as a team is the production. The idea is essential, but so is the production. A great idea can become a really bad one if it's badly executed. Quality is all about the detail, so really be uncompromising when it comes to uh, bring an idea to life. 
as a team, you need to know your strength in that, in that department. So usually it would be the copywriter write the dialogue and direct the voice and the art director is going to be the one polishing the images and responsible for online editing, for example. But in our case, we always try to do everything together as much as possible. Uh, we always felt it helped the bring, uh, to bring the idea really closer to what we both had in mind. So we go with the fourth point, uh, which is the importance of work and life balance. I invite you to read the quote on the screen uh, <laughs> on the left side. We think that all the meaning of life reside in it. Uh, I think a life outside the outside bring ideas inside. This has always been an important saying at LG2, probably one of the reasons I've stayed there for uh, so long, and probably one of the reasons we have a strong problem. Now, double that saying by two teammates, it gives a tons of great possibilities. To be in the business of creative marketing, you need to be inspired by culture, uh, by people around you, by conversation happening, by fact that you hear, to be curious about what is going on around you. To get those inspiring nuggets, you need to live outside the office. And this is really important for me and Jen. We have to live outside the office to be great inside the office. And to ping pong them with your teammates, you both need to really believe and commit to that. Advertising can be really tough. So sometimes you will have to put, put in long hours. So you need both as partner to know when to stop and rest and when to crush it. And the most important thing is to respect, respect that, that mind. Point five, responsibility. So uh, as a team in an agency, you will have the opportunity to solve business challenges, uh, change perception, and bring awareness to a cause. Doing good work is, uh, is a responsibility. It's your job. That's what we are paid for. We're not in the business of making art. Yes, uh, if you work hard you, and you are lucky, you will probably have some good stuff in your portfolio, uh, win a award along the way, and get talked about in the news. But never forget that should always be the aftermath of good pieces that have a real positive impact in a client business. You always have to keep in mind what is the greater goal. Anyway, uh, when someone look at your work, uh, that's always what they will have in mind because ultimately ideas that have a real impact that is, keep, uh, that, that is what keeps the business going. Point number six. Yes, that brings us to point number six. Um, so this is the very first rule that we gave ourselves and I think that's one of the reasons that uh, we work so well together. And that is to always have fun. I think that's uh, Frederick who made that rule first and we, we just got, we always follow, follow it. And um, because that's really because as much as like, I would like to tell you that every brief will be fun, every client will be willing or nice and every production will be a breeze. That's just simply not the case. And in those times where the fun is not to be found on the project, the only thing you can control is the fun that you have with other people. And in the creative team case, it's more than often with the fun that you have with your partner. So you have to keep that in mind and try to always find something to be fun, like a great atmosphere in the team to, to have fun on every project. In conclusion, for us as creative, being in a team is really uh, the one thing that makes this job so great. When you're a team, everything is more, more idea, more fun, more personal growth. And when you are well matched, that's really uh, where the magic happens. And from our point of view, uh, there is a real opportunity there to become a really better creative as well as a better person. So if you have any question. 
Thanks, guys. That was really interesting. Um, I hope our audience did too. We have a couple questions from the audience right now. What was your biggest fight? Oh. Gee, fight. Have you fought? <laughs> oh my God. I, I don't remember what the subject was. It was, um, I don't remember what the subject was. I don't know if you do, uh, Frederick. I, I remember it. I, I, have, I have one. Oh, you have one? Go. Yeah. <laughs> My biggest fight was, okay, I'm, we, we are working for a grocery chain in Quebec, uh, which, what, which the name is Maxi. And I remember that when we got the brief, me and Jen, they, they asked us to uh, make something serious, to uh, don't have a speak per spokesperson. Uh, and that, that brief was really, really, really rational. And we ended up with a crazy campaign. We present only one campaign, and it was just a crazy one with a, a spokesperson, a, a, a humorist from Quebec. And this job just never answered the brief. So we had to come to the client and fight a little bit and convince a little bit hard, I think. Uh, so that was the, a big fight when you don't. You can go outside the brief, but you have to be sure what you are proposing is just a crazy thing and that it will work. So that, but yes, Jen, go for it. Is, is the person was talking about fight between us two or fight for a job? A <laughs> fight between us? Oh, no, 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 we never fight, fight like this. <laughs> I, and, but I don't remember the subject, but if it was between us, I think it happened after the first year and it probably lasted like 15 minutes. Like we're not good at fighting. So we, the two or three times it happened, we always try to say straight up what's going on just to break it because we don't live well with not being happy at each other all the time. <laughs> um. We have, a, we have a, the questions are rolling in. So let me see here. What is your favorite account that you work on at LG2 or your favorite dream account as a duo? Hmm. Um, I think there's really two accounts that we have loved uh, working together a lot, which is Maxi and Valentin. I think that's two of our great success, Valentin, for those who don't know, it's a fast food chain in Quebec, specialized in poutine and hot dog. They're really good on the, um, on the social media. And there is Maxi, which is the, the, the kind of the no frill, I would say, from Ontario. Is it, am I right, Fred? Yep. Okay. And so those were our two uh, main accounts we worked on uh, as a team. And also when we split as co-creative director to become a creative director on our own, we, had, we split those two accounts. So he kept one and I kept the other one. So I think those were our shoo-shoo uh, account when we worked as a team. And the Société de Sauvetage, Jen, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to say it in English. What's the name in English, do you know? Uh, Life-Saving Society. Yeah, we work for the Life-Saving Society for four years, I think, during four years, and we was doing sensibiliz sensibilization on the, about the drowning. And uh, we, personally, I really enjoyed this account because it had a real impact on, on life. So uh, for the four years that we work, well, was working on this, uh, the stats were really excellent about the, dr the drowning always, uh, go, the, the going less and less and less. So that was an account that I really enjoyed. Trust. And a dream account, I don't know. Do you have a dream account that you want to work on? Uh, not really, maybe the Canadian Montreal, I would, it would be cool <laughs> <laughs> for me. <laughs> I know, that's a trick one. Um, what were your brainstorming tricks and do you have tips for anyone trying to brainstorm brainstorm from home? Oh yeah. Um, like I said earlier, we always try to um, get some. Um, in French, we call it poignet. Get some like uh, 
like brief idea. It, it, would, it could be a sentence, it could be an image, it could be a just um, thought starter or maybe sometimes it's a pieces. It could be like a TV or something, but we, we try on our own to start the brainstorm by ourselves. And when we get together, we can exchange that. And like we see, it's like a ping pong game. Like we, we exchange and we see if the other one just rebound on it or, or it just fall flat. And that way, usually when an idea brings an exchange, we know there's something there. That, so that's, what, that's how we play. Um, but uh, to brainstorm at home, it's, it's, a really, it's really more difficult, but I would say, if you you have to, I'm a big user of uh, just the, the little scribe book like that. So uh, I, I, I know it's old school, but it, all, it, it was always good for me, but also uh, internet digging, but not just like idea that were done for brief like that. Like just don't look at, if you're doing TV spots for, um, for groceries, for example, don't just look at spots for grocery because you're like you're gonna see idea that already that were already done. So try to gig in other field and also listen to what's going on on TV, what's going on in social media to get influenced by it. Yeah, that's my true. advice. Would, my my advice would be to keep it simple. Uh, often I, I'm I'm looking for insight and. If you you have a, if you keep it simple in your mindset, uh, uh, you have to find something that people will refer. So don't don't, don't be too complicated. The the answer is always uh, often in your face, and you just have to open your mind to see it in a simple way. It's simple to find the insight yeah. because it's the simple one that you want. Look around you. Look people around you. How they act? How they react to stuff? And there's often answer in there. Good point, for sure. Um, have you ever been jealous of each other's accomplishments? No. No, I, I, I wish, I mean, I think you know, we push I'm, each I'm, other's, uh, but we're so proud of the other one when they get something good done. I'm just so. not made like, made like that. I have a twin brother and uh, je jealousy. <laughs> doesn't exist <laughs> so no i'm just not made like that i think we just want the other one to be better so we're always going to push the other one but never get jealous of yeah that's good stage. Okay. um and i think that's why like a partnership you guys really worked um on your partnership you didn't rush into anything and i think that's kind of why um you guys work out well um, that, that's important in a partnership. You don't have, you don't have to have an ego. If Jen find the insight and the idea, I have to build on it. Not, not thinking of, oh shit, she find the idea. It's not me. It's not the mindset you have. It, you have to really build something together, and yeah. that's the way you will have, you will find success. Exactly. Okay, we have a few more questions here. So how do you find the accounts? Oh, it's not us. It's usually becoming from account people or the there's really like a, a part of LG2 that's there to uh, do the business development. But the um, team is there to solve the problem at the end. Yeah, some sometimes it could be through a friend. There's a campaign me and Fred worked on uh, last year, which is uh, which it was Prema Quebec. So that came from a friend who was touched by a cause. That sometimes can can happen, but mostly it come from a business development at LG Two. We do fight for for account though. When we hear there's an account coming in and you're interesting, uh, bye. We try to get all of it, obviously. Okay. Um, what advice do you have to be an inspiring video editor creator? 
don't think this is, uh, it's probably not as relevant for you as much as some of our other speakers, but if you can share some insight on that. Sure. Um, I think, I mean, it's not a, our field of experience, but we, tr we, we start more and more to do demos. So we have to uh, have a basic uh, knowledge of editing a little bit. But um, I think I would say, as I would say for anyone in, uh, who wants to go in advertising as a creative, just look at a ton of stuff. See uh, which, see video that you like and try to understand the rhythm they wanted to, to create, what emotion they wanted to bring and how the editing um, helped to bring that emotion. So really to look at um, as much as influence and pieces that you can see and try to understand how they, how they bring the idea, how the editing was like helping the idea. So you're going to learn by just looking at different stuff and, and uh, develop technique and, with that. And try stuff. Uh, if I give an example, you have, you have to test to see, uh, you have to test something because if you are, if you're editing, a, I don't know, a joke in a spot, uh, the rhythm is really important. So uh, maybe you, your way to think about editing it is not the right one. So you have to taste, test some editing and see if uh, there's, there's another way to see it. Uh, another, another advice would be from my art director uh, point of view, the motion design is really important. The, uh, the visual aspect is really important. So you have to have a good knowledge with the motion design, I think. Good, good answers. Um, let me see here. Um, what was the most challenging client issue in regard of proposing an idea and how did you deal with it? I, um, <laughs> I, I don't think I can pinpoint one, one uh, thing, but um, we did work with some client that had uh, really stuff that they can say or not say like legally. Um, we worked a lot on Desjardins insurance uh, at the beginning of, of the time we, are, we were a team. And there's really some legal as aspect to it. So there's some stuff they really can't say. And it's re and really important to work around that. Sometimes it, it can feel like restrictive, but you have, you have to not see that as bare and just try to to go around it all the time or use it as a, to propel you, to propel your idea um, further. It could be the same thing with um, all the milk aspect and like uh, agropur, which have like uh, cheese and uh, yogurt and stuff. They're, they're really legally some stuff that they can say and not say. And you really have to be aware of that at the beginning of the project. Otherwise you're just gonna run into your idea is going to run into something that you can't say and you're going to work for nothing. Because you'll be going back to the drawing board. Yeah. Um, important. Yeah, definitely important to listen on that stuff. Um, let's see. What makes a great creative director versus a great creative? Um. I think you, um, you need, as a creative director, obviously uh, it's better if you don't just want to uh, produce your idea. That's, that's the main difference between a creative and a creative director is the creative director is gonna get someone else idea produced. It's gonna help to make it better, shinier, but it's not gonna be his or her idea. So you have to be willing to uh, mentorship a lot and you're gonna, you need to be uh, good to, yeah, just polish the idea, bring it to life or direct in the good uh, direction because sometimes things bring you more a flash than a really big idea. So you have to help them see that it's just a flash and how can it become like a bigger idea that can, um, back a whole campaign more than just a flash. 
you have to realize that when you are a creative director, you have to realize that you don't work for your brand anymore. You are you work for for, for other team brands for the idea, and if you have an ego and work for yourself, it will never be good. You will never do it. So you a little bit forget about yourself and have the six, the, the other success in mind, and that's the bit I think of the job of the creative director. And also as a creative director, I think you need to have a more business side to your uh, role. Like you, you need to more to understand more what the business of the client is and have a, a really strong relationship with the client because you're going to choose idea to help the business of that client. So you really need to understand well and choose idea that are going to have an impact for uh, the brand. Oh. <laughs> so is there other question? Think so? I think we're alone, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh so. yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so if you have other idea, uh, other question, you can maybe write it in the um, in the chat section. We'll be able to answer. Um, if we are coaching some <laughs> rookie, uh, yes, we, yes, we do have each uh, creative director as some um, four or five uh, person that is overseeing and help mentorship. And it's really un important to know that you're not only coaching um, the younger one, the younger talent, but you are also responsible to still uh, coach the um, the the more uh, senior one because they still need care advice and they still have uh, they still have a thing that they want to accomplish so whatever it's a, it's a, a junior or a senior there's always a um, thing that people want to achieve and you have to help them uh, go toward their goal okay that <laughs> a little bit of technical issues today <laughs> <laughs> are you scared of um social media um we, we didn't we didn't grow with the with social medias so yes maybe um earlier in our career it was a little bit scary but thankfully, I think uh, that's where the younger generation helped us with that because uh, I, I don't think Fred either, but we're not scared of it anymore because we had uh, really the younger generation coach us with that. So I think we're pretty agile in that department now. <laughs> Perfect. I think that um just that does it we are pretty much out of time we hope that this session was informative and you've learned more about what it's like to work in creative um and specifically as a creative partner we appreciate your time and as you start to explore um where your talents fit in the industry or where to study um we hope that you visit creativefutures.ca we have another session, or we have sessions scheduled for next week. Creative Futures um, continues November 16th with the first one happening Monday at 11 a.m. Thank you again. Thank you so much, guys. Merci. Merci. Have a good one. <laughs>